All right, in this tutorial, we'll continue where we left off from the previous tutorial. The only thing really different I've done is uh, I've changed the colors a little bit. And uh, this, I've gotten rid of the circle. I've put the circle back on here because the lighting didn't make sense. So, you know, I'm going to get rid of that. But there is an option like this. So let's just say, for instance, we go and we'll just use a curve circle instead like that. All right, so I'm going to go make that my main object. I'll just move it over here to the side like this. I'll look at it from above in ortho mode. I'll go into edit mode and like that. Now notice the points on the circle like this. There's likely got to be a way to just turn this into a corner, right? So I set G shift Z and I turn that like that. Let's see G shift Z. Whoops, did I do that? G shift Z. Oh, no, it's stuck there. All right, let's try this one here. G shift Z. Then like, all right, we'll turn that one like that. That one like that. And G shift Z. Well, that's almost approximates a square. Not quite what I was looking for, but closer, right? To what I was saying. Well, there's always a way to figure it out. But we'll do that for another lesson. Of course, then you could just take that and use that to we'll scale that down. Instead, that's Bezier Circle 001. Let's go look at this object here up close. See where we are in the scene. Get out of ortho mode. It really throws it off. And scale that down a little bit more. And get the other one. And there it is. So it's not quite a square, but you know, it's better than nothing. More like a gutter. <laughs> Ray, a downspout. All right. So, all right, but now in this lesson, we did the animation in the previous lesson. So the ideal thing is when I go to edit mode here, I've pretty much aligned these with this. But to really do it right, I really should try and align the control point right up with the curve. And in fact, the reason for doing that, that's the way we'll do it with the armatures and we'll for the spline IK constraint. So we want to basically in that case instead of lining up a single object in here like this like for instance if I press control H here notice one of the options we used hook to selected object but one of the other op options is hook to selected object bone. All right. So that basically implies that instead of having this object selected in advance when you're going to go attach it to a control point, you basically select a bone in pose mode and and select it to a control point. Well, these would be easy. I could take this and I said G Shift Z. Whoops, can't do it now because I got the hooks in there. But if I had if I didn't have the hook, it's easy enough just to take the sphere and align it with the control point like that. So we want to try and do the same kind of thing from above. Let's do this. Let's just kind of practice. I'm in ortho mode looking down from above. I'm still going to do one other thing real quick. I'm going to change the color of this background because it's just driving me nuts. can't really see anything with it. I don't know what the deal is with this here. just can't. must be that color over there. It's just like, you know, we're going to change that color too. Those combinations of colors are just hard. Yeah, at least I can see that better. Okay, so it was just kind of bugging me. All right, so I'm going to put this in here. I'm going to add a curve to the scene, Shift A. And I'll use the Bezier curve like before. And maybe I'll start this as my control point down here. It's just a little practice before we get back to the spline IK, maybe even in the next lesson. I'm going to go into edit mode, and I'm going to leave that control point here. All right, I'm going to take this one. I'm going to move it maybe... Well, I'll just initially move it like up here, all right? And then I'll just leave edit mode. And then, well, actually, I'll go back into edit mode one more time. I'll con hit this control point. I'll press Shift S, and I'll put the selection to the cursor. I mean, the cursor to the selected right there. And then I'm going to leave and be in edit mode. So at least I know it's situated at that location right there. That way, when I'm going to now press Shift A and add a mesh cylinder, I know it's sitting at that point. I'm going to rotate it on X 90 degrees, or X 90 like that, and then I'm going to make sure I'm in global mode so I know what I'm looking at. There's Z is pointing that way now, so I'm going to go 
uh, I want to scale in Z, so I'm going to go S Z Z, right? And then I'm going to do S Shift Z Z. I'm going to scale down like that. And I'm going to move it up here like this. I'm going to go into wireframe just for a second. Well, that's terrible mode like that. So basically it's it's kind of aligned with the with that. I know the one control point of that is there. So I'm going to just take this object here and I'm going to move it up. So that's the, that's basically at the bottom control point of that cylinder. All right. And then for this uh, yeah, I'm still in ortho mode. And then I'm going to I ha have the curve now, edit mode, grab this point. I'm going to just press G shift Z and I'm going to move it up to this point of the cylinder. I'm just kind of showing you how I'm aligning these points on the cylinder. And then with this point selected, if I press V, I get a handle type, vector, I'll just press that. And that essentially lines up those two out of control points, the shape of the curve. I could have done it for both, but I just did one at a time. And this I'll press V and I'll press v vector and then I'm going to go back to automatic mode like that. So now these control points are aligned. Maybe I'll do it this way so we can zoom in a little bit. All right, so now the control points of the curve are lined up at the end of the cylinder like this. And then we're going to do a similar thing. You know, maybe in that case I'll do A and select them all, press W, and I'm going to subdivide it. And let me see, that gives me one, two, and I'm going to subdivide it again like that. So how many control points does that give me? That gives me one, two, three, four, five. So that's five control points that I've set up along there. And the reason I did that is because then when I add a bone for, in, when, when you do spline IK, you need to have a separate bone that controls your curve. And the separate bone, the separate bones are basically these are like your control objects up here for your hooks. All right. And it's a separate, you're using a separate curve that's separate from your curve for your armature. All right. So you're going to have two curves in the scene when you end up doing it. So all I'm doing is kind of setting it up so we're aligning things and showing you how to do it. And then what you would do, you would add bones to this, like I would click this here, like that, and once again I would press Shift S and cursor to the selected. Then when I left this mode and press Shift A, and if I added a bone to this scene now, just because, and this would just be my control bone, I could rotate that on, oh, let's see, R, X, negative 90, and then go into um, bone mode, I mean into my armature and get the x-ray. Where is my x-ray? There it is right there. So there it is like that. So that's set at that first bone. I know that's the position of that bone. And then I need another, it, th these are bones aren't, I'm not going to extrude the bone and connect them to each other. I'm essentially just going to uh, add them. I want to make sure they're at the control point. All right, so I'm going to, I'm going to select the Bezier curve again. Let's see, where is it? That's Bezier curve 001. Why do I have two Bezier Curve 001s? That is the oddest thing. What is the... What the heck is that all about? Well, I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're just going to move this out of the way because this doesn't really matter for the moment. I can realign that in a minute. So I'll just grab the curve like that, go into edit mode, and then grab the next... Is that the control point? Or is that the control point? Let's see. I think that's it. Yeah, that's it right there. So I escaped that. And then the same thing, I'm going to push Shift S, cursor to the selected, right? Tab out of that, Shift A, I'm going to add another bone. Like that. And then RX minus 90. It's a little tedious, but, and there's probably a more efficient way, but this will kind of give you the idea. A lot of this, working with bones and spine IK, is just about practice, 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 okay? So I'm just kind of giving you the idea. This is good practice already. Actually, go into here, go into edit mode, get the next control point, shift S, cursor to the selected, tab out of here, shift A, add a new armature. I mean, add a new bone. Oh, maybe I got the wrong one. You know, RX, negative 90, and that's on there. Grab that again, tab into here. Did I miss one? Yeah, I missed that one there. Okay, Shift S, cursor to selected. 
tab out, shift A, add a bone, R, X, minus 90, like that. All right, well, so what I've just done in here, in fact, I'll just save that as we go, adding hooks to a curve bend. Uh, well, I'll give it a different name here in a second. So basically what I've done is I've added those bones to the control point of that curve. And that's exactly what we're going to need to use as the controlling basis. This, that'll be our controlling curve when we make hooks out of these bones. These, home, these bones will become our hooks, just like these spheres were the hooks to that curve. So these bones will be our new hooks. And they'll be separate from a separate armature that's controlling the curve. But we'll do that, uh, oh wow, 10 minutes in the next lesson.